So you've done your workout now, and the final phase of a good workout always includes a cool down. It is a chance for your body to recover, get your heart rate, breathing rate back to normal, get yourself hydrated, etc. So first day was benefits of it, second day was what's happening in your body, the physiology of it. Third day was just the basics of how to do a cool down. Today I'm going to show you 16 different activities for a cool down. They're listed within your notebook, within the lessons. Um, it actually be on, in handouts in your notebooks. And so, you, these are just options. There are a lot of options out there of how to cool down. As long as you remember the basics that I went over yesterday. That grab, keep yourself moving, use the different motions that you were using, keep with the muscle groups that you were working on during your main activity. So, um, one easy one, it's a, just a general one, it's easy. Walk or jog. You know, you finish with your workout, which I did not do because I've been really busy today, but I wanted to get this out. You know, so you walk or jog at the end. Um, whatever it might be. If you get those arm swings in there a little bit, exaggerated, that's fine too. Uh, another one, upper body stretch. Get your hands together. You can do it in standing or seated position. Link those fingers together and reach up to the top as high as you can. Try and keep your back nice and straight. This is your upper body stretch. Um, on the sheet it shows, it, it talks about another one as well. I don't really understand what they were saying, so you know, I didn't, I'm not showing that one. Seated forward stretch. On this one, you've got your feet forward and you're just simply going down as far as you can. Some of you can probably touch your, knee, your head to your knees. Um, some of you cannot. The neck, you know, it's just as far down as you can go. Next up is the knee to chest pose. On this one, you're just laying down. Grab yourself behind the knee. A lot of people show going this way. This is actually a little bit harder on the knee if you're putting pressure on it. Uh, if you don't put pressure on it, that's fine. But a lot of people do. So grab behind the knee and pull it as far up on your chest as you can. Next up, it showed reclining butterfly. These are not always in the position that, or in the order that I would do. I would do the more dynamic ones, you know, before the static stretches. These, this is static stretch. It talks about putting your hands here, arms up here. Um, you can do a regular butterfly as well, down like this. Um, next one is one I really actually like. I love it for my back. The child's pose, um, you're here, you go down to your knees, feet back, down, and just elongate, get your head down to the floor as best you can, and just hold it there. My back loves that one. Um, next one, standing quad stretch, you can do a laying down quad stretch, we do that in class a lot because a lot of people do, they struggle with the standing quad stretch, but you can do it that way. Or you can do it this way, reach back, grab, yeah, want to hold on to something, that's perfectly okay. Um, just keep your knee in line with your body. Um, next one, the downward dog, it's a classic yoga pose. And I actually kind of started with, you start here and then you go up into this position. Yeah, downward dog. Um, next up. What is that showing? I have a list over there that I'm looking at. Um, oh, head to knee pose. It's basically your sit and reach. You're here, knee out to the side, one leg at a time. Hold it 30 to 45 seconds. Same thing on the other side. Um, if you want to do a back saber sit and reach style, your foot should be flat on the ground and your knee up, and then you're reaching out. Uh, next. The standing forward bend. This is just a casual. The next few are pretty low impact. You're standing here and your legs are shoulder width apart. Knees bent a little. And just dangle yourself down. Let your body weight pull you down. 
the body weight type activity. Um, then it has the leg up the wall pose. I've never actually done this one, but the description, you're laying like so, hips next to the wall, bring your leg up by the wall, hands can go here, here, wherever it might be. Actually, it feels kind of nice through there. Um, then the corpse pose. This was always kind of my fun, most favorite one because it's kind of a lazy man's pose, but it's pleasant. You lay here, shoulder width, shoulders or feet shoulder length apart or a little further. Hand pronated, that means the palms up. And you just lay and let everything just kind of fall and you relax. That one should probably be your last thing during a cool down. Next up, spinal twist. This one, you're going to be doing kind of like the other thing. You're Except you're going to be bringing, put one arm out to the side, bring your other leg up, grab on the outside, and you're pulling it sideways. Okay, and this feels really good. It helps to stretch out the glutes a bit, your hip adductors. Um, and next one, marching arm circles. Again, this is dynamic. So it really should be done more towards the beginning of the cool down. And it's just marching arm circles. You're here, marching arm circles. And the last one, body shakes. Just shaking things out. Keeping the body moving, shaking out a leg, etc. Okay, those are just the activities that are listed on the, on the sheet. Um, there's more that you can do. Some things you always need to remember. Hydration. Drink water afterwards. Um, again, massage if you want to just massage yourself a bit. Help to get the blood continuing to flow, get it out of those legs, etc. That's just different activities you can do for a cool down, and you can come up with some more of your own.